So the shock metamorphic effects in rocks and minerals are the only known means of definitely identifying terrestrial impact craters, and they have been used to identify more than 175 terrestrial craters so far. Now that was in 2011. One of the other things that is frequently used to identify craters are shatter cones, because limestones seem to be form these really unique cone-like formations called shatter cones that are produced by the shock wave passing through the rock. Several possible impact structures have been previously reported in China, and one of them was by Wu in 1988 and 89, Shanghuan Impact Crater, China. You have this compression that takes place, and then you have a compression release, and it bounds back. Everybody has seen what happens if you throw a, a rock into a pond. There will be an upward splash right in the middle. So it's a combination of this uplift, which is this rebound effect, and rapid cooling. And then typically you will have a central uplift if the crater is large enough. And once you get to about 20 miles, well, heck, you don't have to have 20 miles. You can get to about five miles, I think even less than that, maybe three miles typically. And of course, a lot of it has to do with the nature of the impactor, the angle of approach, the, the composition of the target rock and so on. But typically at five miles, you're gonna usually get an, a central uplift.